So in version 1.2, we get Caesar, our first s rank defense character, who brings so much more than just shields to the table. Her biggest strength actually comes in the form of role consolidation, which opens the door to a whole bunch of potential team comps. So we've got shields, team buffs, stuns, enemy debuffs, and enemy grouping. And it's not just any one of these mechanics that make her shine, it's the fact that it's all rolled into a single team slot. So for a game that only allows three slots, that's a massive win. So let's take a look at how she does this. Caesar's core skill drives the bulk of her kit, enabling her shields, team buffs, and enemy debuffs. On the shield front, Caesar creates a shield that is shared amongst your entire squad whenever she performs her EX skill, a chain attack, or an ultimate. And while this shield is active, your on-field character also benefits from a 1000 attack buff. This buff is tied for the largest single attack source in the game currently, on par with Sokaku's enhanced fly the flag buff but it benefits from the fact that its application is tied to a much simpler activation mechanic. The strength of this shield is based on Caesar's base impact, so that's the base value that shows up on your character's screen outside of combat, and this can be increased through weapons and disc drives. So this does mean that any impact buffs that you might get in combat through weapon passives will not affect your shield strength. I'll put on screen here a chart that lists out what your expected total shield values are depending on the type of loadout that you decide to go with. So that's potentially around 3,800 shields as an M0 Caesar, and close to a maximum of 5,000 if you decide to get a copy of a signature engine. The last component of Caesar's core skill is tied to her being in a team with the same faction or any character that can perform a defensive assist, which is currently pretty much every single character except for Ji Yuan, Rina, Billy and Grace. When you have this bonus active, whenever Caesar activates a perfect block or counter, a defensive assist or a charge attack, she will apply a debuff effect to all enemies within a 7 meter radius, increasing the damage that they take by 25% for 30 seconds. So the short of it is, with Caesar on your team, you'll be able to get your team up to 5000 shields and 1000 attack and debuff your enemies for 25 bonus damage with a single defensive assist or EX counter. So this makes her one of the fastest buff applicators when it comes to the likes of Sokaku, Rina and Nicole, even dethroning Lucy for ease and speed of buff application as well. Alright, so we've been talking about all of these parries and counters just now, so let's take a look at the rest of her kit to see exactly what that entails. First up, her basics. So it's a 6 hit attack string that looks like this. However, there is an alternative string that can occur when you cancel parts of a basic string with her charge attack, Dead End, which we'll cover shortly. But here's what the combo looks like when you weave in a charge attack off of the first hit. Now, instead of performing her forward shield throw, you cancel it into her AoE charge attack, which continues into the alternative third hit attack string. This can also be cancelled in from the second hit as well, and here's all four potential combos lined up next to each other. The first one is the default combo, the second has us cancelling after the first hit, the third has us cancelling off of the second hit, and the fourth has us perform an extended combo of basic 1, 2, 3, charge, alternative 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, if all that sounds super confusing, then the good news is, it doesn't matter. Honestly, the only reason I brought it up was because there is a listing in the attack's motion values for the alternate 3 attack. So people might get curious as to how we pull off the alternate 3, so that's where it comes from. There's no real value in doing it other than giving you the ability to seamlessly weave in the charge attack mid combo in the event that you need some additional grouping. Now on that note, let's take a deeper look into the grouping functionality of Caesar's charge attack. So this got a lot of people excited when it was first revealed in the character review on the live stream. I know I was since grouping is such a powerful tool for speedrunning Shiyu defense. Being able to effectively group enemies takes off a significant amount of time off of your clock. Sadly though, after testing this thoroughly, I do find it sorely lacking. The range on the pool is far from what you would get from Nicole's EX skill. It feels as though it's more for compacting enemies that are already grouped, so that you can hit them with an attack with a smaller AoE. When using it as a grouping attack for enemies that are further apart, you can see the difficulty that I run into here on screen. It just feels like it needs just a tad more range for it to truly feel useful. And the thing is, this particular move doesn't come free either. Using this move will eat up one of your assist charges. These are the charges that you use to perform defensive assist. So unfortunately, this part of the kit doesn't live up to my expectations. Next, we've got Caesar's skill and EX skill. So like we said earlier, 
Caesar's core was the driver of the bulk of her kit, and it's responsible for scaling of her shields, damage buffs, and damage debuffs. Well, it's her EX skill that acts as the vehicle to deliver not only the supportive buffs, but also her damage and stun that comes with it. So Caesar's skill is a shield bash that has different ending mechanics depending on when and how you perform it. So we can have a quick look here at the non-EX version. Just know that you'll very rarely ever be using this variant as the idea is to use the EX version and then swapping out once you're out of energy. But here it is. You put your shield up and if you get hit, you take 40% less damage and you get pushed back a little. Now, after you block that hit, you can also press the skill button again and that's going to perform a counter attack which looks like this. What you want to do however is time that initial block to perform a perfect block. So this is really simple to do, the timing is exactly the same as a perfect dodge. So you just want to tap the block as soon as you see the flash and instead what we'll get is this bright blue bubble that appears to signify that we did a perfect block. So this does three things when we're doing it in the non-EX variant. So before we took 40% less damage from our block, now instead we take zero damage. And we also don't get knocked back at all. And then lastly, Caesar's going to immediately thrust the sword out and do a counter attack without us needing to input another skill. If you do press skill again here, however, you instead just bring your shield up again. And that's all nice and dandy though, but what we really should be focusing on is the EX variant. So this is where the bulk of Caesar's stun and damage will be coming from. Caesar's EX skill functions exactly the same as her regular one, except that now when you perfect block, you're able to press the skill button a second time to chain a second shield bash into a thrust for absolutely no additional cost. So we can see on screen here that with a full energy bar, Caesar is able to perform three perfect blocks before she runs out of energy. This second example that I'm putting up on screen here though, shows us do an EX block into a counter, also three times. So you're leaving almost half of your damage and stun on the table if you're not following up your perfect blocks. So make sure you use it. So one last thing that I wanted to tack on to the end here is that there is a passive buff that is tied to Caesar's skill. It's called Stand Switch and it's a buff that triggers whenever Caesar performs a perfect block, a counter or a defensive assist. It only lasts for 3 seconds but it does give her a 20% boost to her impact. So there's really not much to it. 3 seconds isn't very long and it's not going to be even long enough to cover her full basic attack string. So it's just really designed to further incentivize you to do perfect blocks over regular blocks. Okay, so now onto the rest of her kit. Her perfect dodge and dodge counters function similarly to existing characters, but it is incredibly lackluster and this is by design. Her dodge counters only perform a single thrust attack, which results in very little damage and daze, and this is to incentivize you to use the block and counter components of her kit instead. Her dash attack is a running shield bash, and it's unique in the fact that you can chain a shield bash counter attack off of it by pressing skill after the dash attack lands. Likewise, her defensive assist, while functionally the same as other defensive assists, does allow you to press the skill button to perform a counter attack right off the back of the defensive assist attack. And now finally her ultimate. So in terms of rocking a Caesar as a support, you're likely not going to be using ultimate as much as it's going to be far more effective on your main DPS instead. Usually characters other than the DPS have gimmicks tied to the ultimates to differentiate them from their damage counterparts. In this case, as a defense character, Caesar additionally restores an extra 3 assist points upon using her ultimate. Even with this, I still don't think this one is really worth using over getting more damage. And so, to sum it all up, her leveling priority is going to be core ability and your EX skills. These two are essentially what makes Caesar, well, Caesar. Next up is going to be the assist, followed by the basic attack, as ideally you always be bringing in Caesar via defensive assist every single time. So you have plenty of mileage from the levels in assist. And for basics, we're going to be using those whenever we're waiting on a shield counter. So we should be able to make use of that as well. Lastly, the lowest priority is going to be ultimate and dodge. These two abilities will rarely see the light of day when playing Caesar properly. Now let's talk about how we put all of this together when playing Caesar. Those of you who want a simple character are in luck here, as Caesar is incredibly simple to use effectively. In scenarios where you have a narrow DPS window that you want to take advantage of, Caesar can be played as a quick swap support. You swap her in off of a defensive assist and chain in a shield counter. And then at that point right here, Caesar's job is already done. She's applied her shields, her buffs, and the enemy debuffs, and now you can just throw out some basic attacks while we wait for the next defensive assist into the next character. If you've got a little bit more fuel time to spare and you want to apply more days, we can instead throw out a full EX shield counter into an EX follow-up. So this is going to build up a bunch of stun. 
Depending on how much energy you have left and how aggressive the enemy is, we can continue to do this until we either run out of energy or the enemy is stunned. What we don't want to be doing with Caesar is running around and wasting field time when we don't have energy for those perfect counters. Okay, so with that over, let's talk disk drive options. So Caesar is a fairly versatile character who can function with a variety of setups, depending on what kind of team that you want to play her on. In terms of an all-rounder set, I would say that your best set is the new Protopunk disc set, which is clearly designed for Caesar. Its two-piece bonus grants you a 15% bonus to shields, and its four-piece grants your entire team a 15% damage increase for 10 seconds, whenever a squad member triggers a defensive assist or an evasive assist, which is very frequent with how you tend to play with Caesar in the team. Now, the problem with brand new sets is that we're going to be starting on square one again, and not everyone has the time or resources to heavily invest into it at the start of a new patch. So what are our other options? In terms of a general set, if you don't have anyone else on your team using it, then reusing some of your swing jazz pieces will work. Especially if you're running her in a stun based team, as you'll be able to get quite a few chain attacks through stun. On that same note, when played for stun, the Shockstar Disco set will also be okay on her. Although the 4 piece bonus isn't as powerful on her, as she primarily deals days through EX skills, so you do lose some functionality there. Another option is to simply go with a 2 2 2 mixed set, as she benefits from so many of the 2 piece bonuses. You should be able to easily farm 2 decent pieces of the Protopunk set for the 15 bonus shields, along with 2 pieces of Swing Jazz for energy regen, and then follow it up with 2 pieces of Shockstar Disco for additional impact. So it's a win win win. Now, if you plan on running Caesar in a Jane team, then this does open the door to a potential Freedom Blues loadout. This gives us 30 anomaly proficiency, along with additional anomaly buildup resistance reduction against physical anomaly, which works out well when we're pairing up with Jane. In terms of stat priority, since Caesar really only scales off of impact, the only disc that really matters is the D6, which can roll impact. But even then, it's not necessary to go impact on this disc, as this could easily be run as energy regen to smooth out our rotations. You need to ask yourself what is it that you want with your Caesar? More stuns and shields? Then go impact. You want more reliable EX shield counters? Then go with energy regen. Hell, are you playing her as a sub DPS for more team damage contributions? Well, then slap on an attack disc. Or are you playing her in a Jane Anomaly team? Then go with Anomaly. Now let's move on to the topic of engines. So I've already done a comprehensive deep dive on her signature engine along with alternative free to play options. So if you've got 10 minutes to blow, then I'll link to that video down below. So instead I'll give you guys a cut down version of that. Her signature engine is understandably her best engine. It gives us more shields, more stun and more utility through a team wide damage buff. But if you don't have the resources to get it, then have no fear. I'll flash on screen two charts that you can pause on to take a look at and that covers the stun value and shield strength differences between using her signature engine compared to an A rank stun engine. So in terms of stun speed, when using a defense engine with no impact, you're looking at a 30% loss over her signature engine. Slapping on an A rank stun engine however brings this down to just 15%. On the shield front, you're looking at roughly 1000 extra shields when using her signature engine over an A rank stun engine. And yes, you might be thinking, why are we talking about stun engines? She's a defense character. Well, here's a chart that compares the differences between her best A rank defense engine at P5 compared to a P1 stun engine. Anyway, I go over this in much more detail in my other video, so if you want more info, please check it out. And so that pretty much covers it. In terms of Caesar's value as a character in the current meta, well, if you look at it mechanically, she's not really designed to be anyone's best in slot. But because she's such a good character all around, she's able to slot into pretty much any team. What I mean by this is that someone like Ching Yi is clearly designed as a Juyuan pairing, just like how Bernice is clearly a Jane pairing. You could argue that Caesar is the clear Ellen pairing in that she enables Ellen to safely perform her full basic combo, but then that safety is kind of provided to everyone who plays with Caesar. So it's not just a Ellen pairing thing. But that said, that's not a bad thing. Caesar is truly universal. That's the reason why I didn't have a team loadout section in this video. You can slap her into any team and she'll function perfectly fine. So I hope this helped. Let me know if you guys plan on pulling for Caesar or if you'll be saving for Bernice or one of the other version 1.3 characters that have just been dripped. See ya!